Hello, and welcome to What's the Word, an electrical industry podcast. I'm Jason Cox, and along with my co-host, Zach Hartle, we're having relevant conversations with people in the electrical industry. On this episode, we are talking about Ideal Industries and their skills competitions. Ideal runs a series of competitions eligible for apprentices and certified journey people throughout uh, North America, and I believe throughout the world. To talk about this today, we're joined by uh, previous competitor, Paul Hananiah. Paul is with Panel Upgrade Experts. And we're joined by Graham Brown. Graham Brown is the Western Regional Manager for Ideal Industrial. So let's get to this episode and see if you have what it takes to compete at the Ideal National Championships. Starting off today, we are joined by Graham Brown. Graham, welcome to Watch the Word podcast. Thanks very much, guys. I, I really appreciate you inviting me today, and I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So, I mean, before we get into Ideal and before we get into the national competition, uh, maybe just tell us briefly how you got into the position you're at now and just a little bit of your background in the industry. Well, just a, a little bit of background. I, I uh, when I was growing up uh, back in the late 1800s, uh, I had a, a neighbor that was an electrician, and and really as a teenager from you know 14, 15, I started doing a lot of odd jobs with him as he was uh, you know doing odd jobs around uh, Edmonton. I grew up just outside Edmonton, so I did that for you know three or four years as uh, as a teenager, and that's how I raised money to go to school. And then when I was finished, uh, Nate, uh, a good friend of mine owned his own contracting outfit and he was looking for somebody to set up a, a bid system for him on the computer. And it was a temporary thing that uh, lasted about uh, six, seven years and uh, started with him. And then uh, after that kind of closed down, I, I went to a distributor in Edmonton, a company named RL Brews and Son, back when Brews owned the, fa or the family still owned the company. So worked for them uh, for about 10 years, and then I switched to uh, man the manufacturing sales side of things and took over as a sales manager with a, another really large uh, manufacturer and worked for them for about uh, 13, 14 years. Uh, and then since then, I've, I've worked for a couple of different manufacturers over the years, and uh, I basically, I've run Western Canada over the, over the last probably 20 to 25 years in this industry so had a bit of experience and that sounds like a lot of experience to be honest with you you definitely know what you're talking about you're calling me old jason is that what you're doing <laughs> i think i think you and i are from the same vintage graham yeah same vintage so like a fine bottle of wine yeah i mean it's been great experience because i I never expected really to be involved in the electrical industry. That's not what I went to school for. But uh, once you get in and once you get working and it's been a great industry, it's treated, you know, it's treated me very, very well. Yeah, it's a thing that I'm always curious about when people are in our industry and uh, nine times out of 10, it, they've, they've got into it through someone they knew, whether it was in your case, like a neighbor or more often a family member. Uh, there's not a lot of people that, well, there's th that rare few that decide from day one, I want to be an electrician. So, so it's always interesting to hear the story of how people get and stay in the industry. Um, turning to the uh, ideal industry side here, um, maybe tell us a little bit about what ideal has been doing over the last few years to, to keep up with changes in the industry. Well, really over the last three or four years, uh, you know, which COVID has taken probably three, three quarters of is uh, we actually have a, a really robust uh, uh, marketing and a research and development team uh, based out of the U.S. We're, we're still a family owned business. Uh, they're fifth generation family now. So they spend a lot of money on uh, R&D and we actually have a, a department run by a gentleman who's worked for several different business entities within the family and he really had a, a great roadmap over the last three or four years and, and we've re released probably new, more new products in the last three years than we would have over the last 10. 
And the roadmap still looks very robust for the remainder of this year and into the next couple of years. So the gentleman who leads our R&D team right now is uh, holds several patents for the family. Um, and, and he does a tremendous job about creating a great road path forward. Not to put you on the spot too much, but can you give us an example of some of your recent releases of products that are maybe winners, I guess? Yeah, so one of our most recent um, releases would be what we call a, a Dead Eye series. And it's made for, you know, it's a whole saw uh, group uh, and also going to expand that same thing into the drilling and tapping in. But really w- what that is, is the ability to drill into harder metals and stainless steel. Um, several several of our competitors and on ourselves previous have, you know, we have something similar that does really well in mild steel, but nothing that really does very well on the hard metal end of things. So we're, we've created a whole new lineup of cutting that will be called Dead Eye, and it's made for uh, the heavier metal drilling and, and tapping, and then hole saws too. So, perfect. I'm just looking at your website right now, and the Dead Eye collection is definitely featured uh, prominently on the website. And I mean, yeah, any any improvement in technology for that kind of tool is definitely appreciated by electricians for sure. Right. Well, that's kind of where I, th- I think that Ideal has been very strong over the years. Uh, like I say, it's a family business. It's been around since the early 1900s, and, and they really have been um, quite adept at, at adding products, tweaking products, um, that sort of thing. And, and that that mantra still holds today that we continue to do that. So into the Ideal, I know maybe – Maybe just tell me exactly what it's called, but is it the ideal national championship? Is that what it's called? Yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, uh, national championship started uh, about six or seven years ago for us. And uh, it started in the States first, uh, again, being a, a, a U.S.-based company. And really, they gave it an opportunity to uh, – they were looking for a way to – to approach uh, the business a little bit differently than just through the normal sales channels mm-hmm. and looking really to um, to talk to and, and in, uh, be influenced by apprentices and journeyman electricians that were actually using the equipment that we, we manufacture. And probably the most direct way to do that was to interact with you know, the end user. So this championship allows us to put on competitions across Canada, the U.S., uh, Australia, and so on, and and have us interact directly with the people using the equipment on a daily basis, and having them um, use our stuff at the competition level, um, and then give us feedback on what they like, what they don't like, and and then it's really taken. Those comments are taken back, and and again, we have the ability to tweak tweak things and and uh, make adjustments hopefully for the better of of the electricians using the product, right? Yeah, it's cool to take something like a competition and it it hits so many of those things that you're trying to accomplish, right? You get that instant feedback from competitors. You also get a little bit of, I'm sure there's media involved and some marketing going along with it and just getting the name out there, right? So that's something that, I don't know, is important for developing new products and bringing things out, so. Yeah, well, these competitions over the years, I mean, they're, they're, they are on TV in the U.S. They're on ESPN, uh, one of the ESPN channels, um, and the finals are are uh, on TV at that point in time. And it is; it's a really big event, right there, because the there's winners from uh, the last one that Canada was involved because we weren't involved in the last couple due to COVID, of course. But the last one, Canadians were involved. There was competitors from uh, China, Australia, the U.S and Canada. And, uh, you know, again, it gives us the opportunity to meet with people from around the world that are using our, our, our equipment and our tools on a regular basis and, and having a fun and friendly competition to see who can, who can do best sort of thing. And, and the prize money for the, this, this event is like the finals. It's to me, it's, it's absolutely incredible for a couple of years the, a journeyman winner was, you know, in around the $75,000 US uh, for first place. 
this year's competition, uh, a first or a journeyman prize is, is sixty thousand dollars US. So there's some fabulous prize money that that uh, you can win for for winning the competition. Well, and as like I'm kind of going back to the tools and to the competition. How neat is it that you get to use um, a tool, give your feedback to on the tool to the company, and the actual patent owner of the tool is going to actually see your your uh, impact, your review. And I mean, you might indirectly be responsible for a, a subtle change in improving a tool. That's pretty cool. Well, really, we leave that, you know, exactly like you're saying, we leave that up to the, the electricians because everybody has a little bit different way of doing things. And, and uh, you know, when you talk to some people that, you know, whether they've been on the tools for 40 years or where they've been on the tools for four months, something that they suggest it sometimes it's that keep it simple stupid thing where you just go well that's so brilliant it's simple why don't we incorporate that right and and then because ideal has the ability uh to control uh everything internal is we can make those changes and redesign certain things or tweaks something and and then release it to the excuse me to the marketplace which really uh Large, large public companies just don't have that ability to maneuver as quickly within the space today. So Ideal is unique in that area where we're able to take that feedback. Um, the R&D department can take a look at it and see if it you know, can be done on a, on a bigger scale. And if it is, they, they still have that ability to tweak it and release it to the market in a fairly quick period of time. Yeah, and having people with different levels of experience is always a good thing. You got dinosaurs like me that would take a tool and go, I don't know, it's always been like this. Whereas yeah. someone that's new new to the industry would say, well, wouldn't it be just easy if we could do this? And and people like me that have these habits of years and years and years, we go, actually, that's a really good idea. So yeah, so, yeah I think it's an incredible platform uh, for so many reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I looked to, we've had two recent um, tools uh, over the last three months. One's kind of a, a forged plier. So it's a combination of a linesman and a pair of strippers. And really, it combines two tools into one, which is not always great. But, you know, when you talk to people that are working up on lifts or are trucking in a bunch of tools to a site, and then they put two or three that they, you know, essentials into their, their pocket to go do some work, well, this helps alleviate some of that that uh, problem, right? With having to carry too many tools, and it does, you know, a, a really good job on both ends, whether it's stripping or using it as a linesman plier. So it's it's quite unique, and it's uh, it comes from feedback right from the market. Versatility is something that every electrician definitely values when you're up on that ladder or up on that lift, and you've you've lost one tool. So you're defaulting to a second or a third tool. So if you had a, a tool that was very versatile, I, I think it would be appreciated. And then myself, uh, I kind of, when I was still in industry or still pulling wire, et cetera, I was on the service side of the industry. So, so often I would be dealing with customers, carrying a lot of distance through the day, um, monitoring jobs, et cetera. And I'd always want to have like two or three tools in my pocket so that when I was dealing with my staff and then dealing with a client, it would be a quick one, two, three kind of thing. So, so once again, there's a, there's definitely a need for tools like that. Yeah. I think combining a couple of essentials into one tool, you know, really does make sense, especially uh, nowadays, right? Where, where time, time really is money. Yeah. It seems to be a theme in many of the episodes we're talking about now. It's uh, it's that time factor and how can we become more efficient? And with the skills competition that you guys are doing, uh, time is definitely featured in, in those ideal competitions. Yeah, exactly. Time becomes extremely important. And for us, it's just a way of gauging, you know, who we're going to send on to the to the national or not the national level. Sorry, but the, it helps us determine who the Canadian winners are so that we can send them to the to the U.S. for the global competition. So. Um, quality of work is still extremely important, but time gives us that basis to allow for uh, elimination and, and sending on to the next level. So. You're touching on it a little bit, but 
So just um, maybe speaking to the structure of the competition, there would be battle of schools, then a national Canadian championship, and then that would progress to the global, or am I missing a step in there somewhere? There is a little step in there because we, uh, we use these events to get out to, uh, you know, our distributors and our distributor partners then bring in the, the customers to, uh, to their facility. So it helps them, uh, again, uh, show some of the newer ideal uh, equipment and tools. Uh, and then we also do contractor only events where I am actually in Edmonton next week to work with um, the agent who covers Alberta and uh, directly at the, the contractor's facility. And, and they're gonna have 30 to 40 electricians go through the competition. So the way it really works is there's local events throughout uh, Canada. Uh, we did some in Yellowknife this week. Uh, we've had some on the island this week. We've had a couple in Alberta this week and all the way out to the East Coast. So those events are more local and those times are all combined. We have a leadership board on our website that uh, names the, the leaders. And then uh, we do, as you said, Zach, we have a battle of schools in early spring, typically. And then we have a battle of schools um, in the fall, which is more focused towards the apprentice. Because the way the competition works is there is a there's a winner in the West for both journeyman and for apprentice. The fastest times by mid-September. I think the cutoff is around September 15th, just after battle of schools, actually. So the, the top time for a journeyman and the top time for an apprentice then would be the Western representative for Canada, and then they would go compete uh, in the U.S. Uh, this year, it's back in uh, Florida. Last few years, last two or three years, it's been in Nashville. Uh, so the winner gets to go down there, and then there's a winner for Ontario, and then there's a winner for Quebec and the Maritimes, both, again, in the um, journeyman and the apprentice side of things. And this competition, the the national championships, like you said, it's in Tampa and it's going to be November 4th to 6th of this year. So, wow, this is going to be a, a busy, busy time for you for the next few months. Yeah, it's you know what? It's been great because we haven't had to have or we haven't been able to have one in Canada for the last two years. And, uh, you know, for myself, I spend a tremendous amount of time, uh, well, actually on a plane flying to different uh, different areas of, of Western Canada. Uh, and this gives me, its or it's given me already a great opportunity to get back and, and meet with distributors I haven't seen for a couple of years uh, and contractors that, you know, you basically lost touch with over the last two or three. So, for instance, I just did uh, two weeks ago, I did a show in Lethbridge and then the next day in Medicine Hat. And then the day after that, I was in Swift Current. So really had a chance to go, you know, across southern Alberta and Saskatchewan and, uh, you know, spend a lot of money on gas but uh, also had a great opportunity to meet a ton of uh, distributors and their people and their sales reps and then end users to it, everyone. So that to me, it was a great way to once, you know, kind of the gloves came off, so to speak, with COVID is being able to get right back out in the field and, and just talk with people again. And that, that uh, people, I believe, have really, really missed that personal interaction. Yeah, we, that, that, that's something that that comes up. We've been doing our podcast now. This is, I think, we're close to our one year anniversary, and and of course, naturally, COVID has been such a big part of everyone's lives that, um, and we featured it on previous episodes. So, so yeah, I think just for people to get back out there again and actually talk to you in person and see the tools and try things out. Uh, what a, I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that we need. Yeah, and it really is a touchy feely industry, right? I mean, these these electricians are working with the equipment every day, and it really does have to feel right. And you know, size of hand, the 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 cushioning on the on the pliers, everything takes you know that that sense really interacts with the customer, with the end user and the installer, and and unless they're able to try it out feel it get a sense for how it works for them you know you're not really you're not really helping them right and, and really at the end of the day our job as a manufacturer is to make their job easier and with less fatigue because they're working 
a lot of time long hours, especially in Western Canada, where, you know, a lot of times in, in winter, weather does obviously become a factor. The days are shorter, so they're not working as long. But certainly right now where you're, you're getting 12 and 14 hours of daylight, um, how that that tool feels in your hand and and the the result on your body at the end of the day. Right. If the, if it doesn't work for you properly, you're you're going to have all sorts of hand fatigue or arm fatigue, and and that's just not good. Right. In the long term, that's not healthy for anybody. So you need that immediate touch, that immediate feedback to help develop equipment that works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's such a cool way to get that feedback, like you say, and then also kind of give back to the community with prizes and opportunities and. The one thing that is really cool about this competition, I think, to me, is just how accessible it is, right? You you just listed off, you know, 15 places you've been in the last couple months. And so there's an opportunity for in every city, everywhere for apprentice or journeyman to get involved and compete. So uh, I am assuming all that information can be found on the website if anyone's interested in going and trying their hand at getting on the leaderboard. Yeah, exactly, Zach. On, on our uh, website, you can go to the events section and you can type in your uh, postal code and it'll give you the closest event to you that particular day. It'll also give you kind of a, you know, a, a generic look at when I did it yesterday, for instance, uh, there was nothing I don't I don't think going on in, in Calgary yesterday, but we did have one in Yellowknife and there was one on the island. And then it does show some of the different events in the U.S. too. Um, so, so really, I, and certainly where we have some real population density, you know, for instance, in the GTA area, uh, we have electricians and contractors that, that actively go show to show to show to try to get the best time because you can, it's not just one and done sort of thing. Okay. You can, you can go to, you know, so using Calgary as an example, you could go to a distributor in the, in the North end of Calgary on a, on a Tuesday, compete, do fairly well. But then on Wednesday, if it's in a different area of Calgary or at a different distributor, you can go and participate in that event. And you can do it as many times as you can fit in between now and the cutoff in September to get the lowest time. And really, that's, you know, some of the excitement we've seen in previous years was we had exactly that. And, and you mentioned, Paul, that you've interviewed uh, for your podcast also. Uh, I know Paul when he was the representative and went down to, uh, I believe he went to Disney world was where he competed, but he probably uh, did five or six different events throughout Calgary to get to the time he needed to, to get there. So um, it's not just one and done. Like I say, you can do different events within your, uh, within your province. So if you're a, a tradesman registered within Alberta, you can compete in any of the Alberta ones. Okay, very cool. Graham, thanks so much for being on the show today. Uh, tons of information. I'm sure we could talk about tools and competitions and industry for hours. So we really appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate you reaching out to us. And uh, it was great to meet you both. And uh, thanks again for letting Ideal speak a little bit about our competition, a little bit about our, our equipment. And uh, real happy to be here. Thanks again. For sure. Uh, up next on the show, we're just going to sit down with Paul Hanania, uh, he's a previous national competition competitor who competed down in Florida representing Canada. So we'll get into that now. With us now, we have Paul Hanania. He is a previous ideal national competition competitor. Uh, and he's here to tell us his story about that. Paul, welcome. Um, if you could take a couple minutes, maybe before we get into the ideal competition, just tell us a little bit about your electrical career. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, I started when I was 17. I started my apprenticeship with my father in England. Um, so I did 10 years worth of work over there. Um, construction, light, uh, light commercial. I came to Canada in 2008, um, re-sat um, my certificate and got qualified over here. And then um, I, I was doing some commercial work over here in Calgary. Um, and then in 2013, I set up uh, my own company, uh, Panel Upgrade Experts. We specialize in electrical panel upgrades. So um, that um, that's kind of what I've been working on since uh, since 2013. How did you get uh, involved with the Ideal Skills Championships? Yeah, so the um, 
the company where I buy my materials, um, they let me know that uh, there was a competition coming up, which was the qualifiers. So I think that's 2018. So um, did a few of them, got really interested in it, enjoyed it, um, and then was lucky enough to win it, which was which was a which was great, obviously. Um, and then went down to Florida um, in the 2018 uh, national championship. And yeah, really got hooked on it at that point. So, so the next year, I was obviously super interested at uh, a qualifying, put a lot more time into um, uh, practicing for it, uh, practicing for the qualifier, and then managed to get down there 2019, the second year. So yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, very cool. So how, I guess more the national competition or the qualifiers here, what does that competition look like? Like I, I haven't actually seen one. So you walk into a room, what's in front of you? What's the goal of the competition? Yeah, certainly. So the qualifier, um, it's basically a, a small scale electrical installation. It's uh, it's a board, so like a two foot by two foot board. There's a couple of boxes mounted on it. Um, you've got to do a little bit of wiring, wire a switch, wire, wire a light, um, and test it. So pretty simple. Um, the the first year, I remember there was a coax in it. Everyone would get tripped on a coax because you're trying to go as fast as you are, as fast as you can. Coax. It, it can be a finicky thing to strip. You don't quite strip it right, or you strip and you just crimp right. Um, so yeah, the the qualifiers were a lot of fun because they would generally be at the like the open house for the for the supplier. So it's so it's that kind of a little bit of a festival atmosphere. They've got burgers and they've got they've got um, games and stuff like that going on. And this part of it, so the qualifiers are really fun. Like no pressure there with people you know, and you kind of get to know the guys running it. So yeah, the, the qualifiers are a real good time through the summer as well. So mm-hmm. nice little summer event. So you're looking at this board, two feet by two feet in front of you, a couple of switches, a couple of lights. What is the, like, how much time are you talking for? Uh, like, what were your times like on that? Uh, I think the time I qualified with on the first year was like a minute four. Um, but you... It, it takes time of practicing and going to an event and having a go and going to an event and having a go. And you start off with a two, three minute time. And then you kind of shave that down a little bit and you shave that down a little bit. So, um, yeah, I think the guys, I think the fastest guys in the whole thing where they were in the low fifties, which was incredible because I'm doing a one minute four. I don't know how you could shave 10 seconds off that. Like so what they're doing, I don't know. There's some fast guys out there. Truly a speed competition then. Obviously, whatever you're you're wiring, the task has to be functional, but it's a speed competition. Definitely. Definitely the qualifier. Um, once you get into the championship itself, there's a bit more quality involved. But the the qualifier, I think it's you the, the parameter there's, there's the parameters you gotta meet, but then everything else is all it's all speed, ain't it? And then, so talk to us a little bit about uh, the national championships, maybe where it took place and just some of the differences from the regional competition. Yeah, so the the couple of years that I went, it was uh, Orlando, Florida. Um, and the differences, um, it, we, we're getting into that real electrical installs now. So there was conduit involved. There was, again, wiring switches and lights and stuff like that, but on a bigger scale, the board, instead of being a two foot by two foot board was more like a 10 foot by 10 foot wall. And there's an electrical panel and there's, there's squares painted where you've got to land your boxes. So you, you can't do, it's got to be fairly accurate to land on the boxes, sets, etc. So you've got to be able to do box offsets and three point saddles, etc., And then wiring through the boxes to the lights. And yeah. So a little bit more, what you would expect to do on a on a commercial job rather than the board being just like a practice and before that national competition are you presented the project beforehand so you can practice set it up get some training or do you you show up and it's a complete surprise what it is yeah completely so what they did is they split you into two groups so one group will go into um uh the meeting room and they'll explain it so that's it that's that's first thing in the morning, seven o'clock in the morning. You start and like that. they explain. They give you a video and they give you a, a sheet of a rundown, and then you go out and you do it. So there's that nerves that you don't know what's going to come up, and 
you might have been practicing conduit and you, you're just hoping that there's some conduit on there or there's hoping it's something that you're good at. Uh, and then the second group, they would go and sit in another meeting room and then wait for the first group to do the competition. And then they take it all down. Though obviously, they, they, they mark everything, they judge it, and then they strip it down. So, yeah, I mean, if you're in the first group, it's ideal because then you 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 actually get to watch the second group. The first group don't get the second group. Sorry, don't get to watch the first group because it gives them an idea of what's going on. So, yeah, that's the that's really the biggest thing. You don't know what you're going into. Yeah, that that's an interesting perspective for sure. Yeah, like you say, you don't know what to practice. You don't know what to get into. I mean. Contact exactly. splicing seems like a pretty smart thing to practice, but you never know, right? That's interesting. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, just a question here. So I'm watching this on YouTube, and I believe it was the 2019 international. Well, the competition was national and international, I believe. Um, so you're on ESPN. Yep. How much was uh, the the TV crew and the production uh, impacting the competition? From my point of view, it didn't really bother me. Um, once the, the, I kind of felt the pressure was off. Once uh, we'd gone through a couple of the, the, the normal stages of the competition, and I'd already got knocked out this before on, on, on the North American. So I ended up getting into the, into the international because I was the fastest Canadian. And then, I don't know, it was kind of, I was kind of relaxed, so... It, it was it was it was more fun. That was the most fun I've had competing. It seemed like the pressure was off. Just going to go there, do my best, and yeah, it was great. I, I got, got an ASPN, which was fun. <laughs> yeah, well, it looked like some of the competitors. I watched a, a few of the videos, and and when it was over, it was like it's almost like a whole bunch of like you built a bunch of new relationships there too. There was uh, a lot of people were happy with watching other people succeed totally the camaraderie was great and especially with the canadians because we we kind of went or we were all new on the 2018 so we everyone kind of gets to know each other a little bit more because there's so many people there who were there the previous year and they've already got their relationships on so the the canadians we've definitely formed a bit of a bond between our little group and then the second year a lot of the same guys went back so it was great to see everyone again um but yeah the camaraderie on it is is fantastic so more than i was expecting really i mean it's a competition you're trying to beat these guys but you're also become really friendly with them so mm-hmm. it's how many competitors were there from canada um the first year there which was like in 2018 there was two electricians and two apprentices. So it was split east to west. Okay. So like two um, journeymen, two apprentices. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then there was, I think one team. And I think they, they were from Ontario. Um, on the 2019, they opened it up a little bit more. So what was it? Maybe eight eight electricians and eight apprentices. Um, so yeah, it was nice. It was nice that a few more of us went down. So this is ideal tools um national and international competitions uh i just i have to ask here paul is mm-hmm. there an ideal tool that is like one of your favorites or do you have a favorite ideal tool the the best tool that i've used from ideal or the or the coax stripper and crimper so the coax stripper that you would use in what well, that we used in a qualifier 2018 i ended up buying it and the and the crimper because I liked them so much. So it was, um, yeah, they made a sale out of it. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, great, uh, great little tool. There's lots of electricians. I know that, uh, always struggle with coax. It's funny. You mentioned that earlier and then mm-hmm. the takeaway for you was actually, that's the tool that you bought. So interesting. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the other takeaways you have from the competition? What did you learn while you were competing that maybe now you use? at work in your in your company the 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 systematic approach um is how you shave that time down you just you do your wiring and then everything's stripped you strip every single box and then you twist them all you know what i mean so so you can't be going back and forth i think the the premise was talking to the other guys when you get there it's like you only want to be touching the tool once you can't be you can't be taking alignments twist in put it down pick it up put it down 
it's you once you're done with that tool it's gone you get into that too in commercial and residential you know you're always trying to teach your apprentice you know you don't want to go up a ladder down a ladder up a down a ladder oh, move yeah. a ladder right but it, it's mm-hmm. so much more fine-tuned and on us like a smaller scale when you're just talking about a two foot by two foot board, right? Com- completely. And, and we, we kind of do this with our panels. Um, when I, when the guys, the new guys start showing them, it's, um, we, I, I kind of do one side and the next side, but all the wires go in one after another, and then you strip them all. And then you straighten them all. It's, it's step by step. And it, and you do the whole thing. And then you, you terminate all your grounds and then you terminate all your neutrals. So it is definitely, a uh, it's a process. And I like, I, that's, that's kind of why I specialize in panels. I like the fact that it's a process that we can refine and then you can get pretty quick at it. So, and it's repeatable. And then another guy, I can get a guy start and I can teach him that process. And then he can do the panels exactly like I do them. Cause I take, we take a lot of pride in how our work looks as well as uh, how it functions. Okay. So getting back to our, our ideal competition here do you have any advice to apprentices or journey persons if they'd like to compete in this competition in the future yeah definitely i mean you've got to put some time in on the qualifiers if you want to get there with it so that's that's uh the step one and then the second step uh i mean the, the we're, we're lucky that the practice is all work we get to, we get to practice as we're doing it. So I find where the, the the mistakes I maybe made on the last year when I tried to go too fast and my quality suffered. So and, and I didn't that didn't get me as far as I wanted to, uh, as I thought it might. So I feel you've got to be going fast and you've got to be consistent and it's got to be quality. So realistically, to 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 ensure you're going to progress you got to be able to do everything. It's not just a speed competition anymore. And it's not just a quality competition. It's You've got to be able to do everything. So make sure you can bend conduit because conduit has been very prevalent in the competitions. Um, I mean, wiring, we, we should all be able to wire. There shouldn't be too much um, doubt on being able to wire a basic circuit. But yeah, conduit is, uh, I think, the one that most, most people get tripped up on if they can't bend. All right. Anything else, Zach? No, I think that is everything. Uh, Paul, anything else you want to add, or I think uh, not really. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm I'm happy that uh, Ideal have opened it up to the Canadian competitors again this year. So, just waiting for some of them events in Calgary to be organised. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, yeah, hopefully make it. Hopefully make it for the 2022. Yeah, I know uh, COVID has thrown a little bit of a wrench in their system, but yeah. uh, you do plan to attempt to or to compete again? I'll give it a go. I'll give the qualifier to go see what happens. Nice. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciated having you on the show and a little bit of insight into the competition. Thank you. It's been, uh, it's great. It's been great being here. Thank you. And with all that, make sure you check out the Ideal Industries website to find a national championship qualifying event near you. This episode, of course, coming out uh, middle of September now, and we have lots of events coming up in Alberta, Calgary, and all over Canada, including Battle of the Schools, where apprentices will have the opportunity to compete at their technical institute. Uh, So check out the website. We'll link it down below in the description as well. As always, thank you so much for listening to Watch the Word podcast. Jason and I are thrilled to have you here. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google, Anchor, anywhere else uh, to get the latest episodes, or you can check us out on YouTube. Uh, Stay in touch with us on all our social media, which you will link down below as well. Thank you so much. Keep yourself safe out there, and if you can, someone else too.